Hi everyone and welcome to Vocabulary TV. In this episode of Melting Pot, we are going to uncover the origins of several words and phrases in English which are based on our perceptions and prejudices related to the directions left and right. As we know, words associated with the right side are generally complementary or have signified something desirable as opposed to those pointing to the left and on this fact we would like to link together these words and expressions so that you could learn them easily and effectively. The first thing that I would do is to give you a flavor of how these words and phrases could be used through a short reading task. Try to read it actively and guess the meanings as you go along. Here it goes. Today is my big day at work. My first assignment is due and I have meticulously planned the moment. Taking care that I might not wake up on the wrong side of the bed, I do all the customary course in the morning on time, ready the attire I would wear for work and even rehearse my presentation so as to avoid any last moment gauchery. I reach office and have some time on my hands before the meeting, which I utilize for daydreaming. And though I have no doubts that I am quite adroit at my work, at the very last moment I find myself reflecting on the past few months of extreme stress and slogging on the assignment and wonder whether I am still in my right mind. My telephone rings and it's a call for everyone to join at the conference room. And I decide to shrug off all my inhibitions and put my best foot forward in the meeting as I certainly do not want this meeting and my career to get off the wrong foot. In the conference room, I am able to dexterously sift through numbers and present my recommendations. Relieved finally that it is over, I see my boss walking towards me. He says, Your presentation was quite impressive for someone as inexperienced as you. Thoroughly startled by this comment and judging by my boss's sinister looks, I ask myself, did he just pay me a left-handed compliment? With all the words and idioms mentioned in the reading task, I guess you have already got a hang of our topic. Before we illustrate them further, let's understand a few key facts about their origins. For ages, left was believed to be the side of the devil and there were several associations of the devil with the left side. A notable one being the notion that the devil himself is left-handed and the same has been portrayed in various historical pictures. The Romans believed that evil spirits lurk over the left shoulder and that devil watches you over your left shoulder. And so, one must throw salt, which was a valuable commodity back then, over this shoulder to placate the devil and ward these spirits off. Besides, in Roman augury or fortune telling, birds that appeared on the left side were interpreted as bringing bad luck. However, those on the right side presaged good luck. And that's why left is considered evil or inauspicious. The most prominent word highlighting this notion is the Latin term for left which is sinistra. The Latin word sinister originally referred to the left hand side from the point of view of the bearer of the shield and the word got its current meaning because of all the associations we have discussed. In contemporary English, sinister is used to give an impression that something harmful or evil is happening or will happen. For example, there was something sinister about the look on Dr. Evil's face. Often, the left side is also referred as the wrong side. Say for instance, if someone gets up on the wrong side of the bed, it originally meant to get up on the left side. And because of all the superstitions associated with left, this was believed to be a bad omen, which would probably spoil your whole day. From that, the idiom to get up on the wrong side of the bed started meaning to be irritable or in a bad and unpleasant mood from the moment you wake up for no obvious reason. Similarly, if you are embarking on a journey and you get off the wrong foot, 
that is the left foot, it would mean a bad start. Again, many people believe the phrase started being used due to the superstition that when getting out of bed, it is unlucky to put your left foot on the floor first. So, when starting on a new relationship or a new project, you would certainly not want to get off the wrong foot. Rather, when you are starting on a journey or task, you must do it with purpose or gusto. That is to say, you must put your best foot forward. As you would have guessed it, best foot refers to the right foot. Those sticklers for grammar would say it's a wrong construction because we are comparing only two feet, we must use better and not best. And in contrast, right has further taken meanings such as morally good, acceptable or correct and proper. So when someone is in his or her right mind, the expression means he or she is in a healthy mental state, is sane and rational. Whereas if someone is not in his or her right mind, he is not able to think clearly or is mentally ill. An example would be, it is no use talking to her right now as she does not seem to be in her right mind. And isn't it better to be right than wrong or even left? As left takes on the idea of wrong in idioms such as left-handed compliment. A left-handed compliment is the reverse of a real compliment and is hence an insult concealed in an apparent compliment. Like consider this girl giving a compliment to her friend. I just love your dress. It really helps you disguise all that extra fat around your belly. Now such a compliment could be best described as a left-handed compliment. And while the superstitions related to left being evil and inauspicious have subsided over time, left is still associated with awkwardness and clumsiness around the globe. These seem to be universal preconceptions and the best example is the fact that even today children are mostly discouraged by their mothers to use their left hand for life skills such as eating, writing or playing sports. The mothers would have a difficult time accepting if their ward turns out to be a lefty and in societies, lefties are often called cack-handed. This is despite the fact that around 10% of the world's population is left-handed. Apart from English, even other languages such as Latin and French, from which English inherits many words, reflect the same bias in favor of the right and against the left. In Latin, the word for right is dexter, from which has come the English word dexterous, meaning skillful, especially with reference to the use of hands. Now this is what a person who uses the right hand is expected to be. Usage example for the word dexterous would be, the potter was quite dexterous in his job of crafting exquisite showpieces out of clay. And since the prefix amdi means both, an ambidextrous person would be even more skillful since he is described as having two right hands. The adjective ambidextrous describes someone like Professor Virus in this picture who is able to use the right and left hands equally well. While right is skillful and two right hands are expected to double up your skills, Two left feet, in contrast, would make you completely clumsy or awkward as far as their use is concerned. If a person stumbles while dancing, he or she can be described as having two left feet. So far, we have discussed Latin influence on English. Now a few words from French in English which closely resemble the left and right of French directions, that is, gauche and droite. The word gauche in English describes someone who is unsophisticated and socially awkward. For example, even as an employee, he was quite gauche and often did awkward things like dropping documents or dressing inappropriately, much to the embarrassment of his boss and colleagues. A related word is gaucherie, which is a noun referring to someone's awkward and unsophisticated ways. And the word adroit literally means according to right or properly and describes someone who is very skillful or clever 
and does things properly. For example, as an artist, he was quite adroit at his job. An exact opposite of the word adroit would be maladroit. The prefix mal means bad. As opposed to an adroit person, a maladroit person is inefficient or inept and clumsy too. This word is a synonym for gosh. For example, take a cue from this Disney character Goofy who can aptly be described as maladroit as he is very clumsy and tends to goof up everything and make silly mistakes too often. So that was the melting pot and hope you have learned some new and exciting words and phrases. Subscribe our channel and stay tuned for more such videos. Thank you.